but yeah. Okay. Hello. I think we did a check, yeah. That's good. Hello and welcome everybody. Um, I'm Tola Fogheen. And I'm, I'm Michael. Been <laughs> <laughs> I've been a Debian developer since 2001 and Michael and I are here today to talk about systemd in Debian, both uh, the current state a little bit about systemd itself and our plans for Jesse and a bit on how we see the integration of of systemd in Debian especially also in relation to to other init systems yeah. so the idea is if And after is probably mostly what you want uh, as, as a writer of a system D file. And the really cool thing here is, as Tolif already said, um, as uh, System 5 init scripts are just another configuration source for System D, um, it parses the LSB header. And um, I mean, I'm going to show it quickly later on. Um, what you can do uh, is you can declare dependencies between all of them. So. I mean, there are other systems which uh, treat um, System 5 init as a completely different uh, and separate from the own uh, init system. And the cool thing here is that you can mix and match. And uh, what this also means for Debian is that we can, uh, later on, we're going to talk about that, you can actually replace uh, packages one by one, and it doesn't matter in which order it, this is happening, because the dependencies will still work. So... so <clears throat> System D has certain unit types. Unit is um, the central configuration source for system, system D. It's uh, any based, any style based, and, and we have seen an example earlier. So, and they're basically, I, I try to group them, they're basically six, six types uh, which you need to be aware of. There's the target, which we already mentioned. A target is comparable to a, to a run level in System 5 init. Um, one of the differences is that multiple targets can be active at the same time. And, for example, the multi-user target is comparable to our RC2 or uh, 2.25, which we use in Debian. Um, a service is the central description of, of an actual service that you want to have started. Um, socket is a, a special uh, unit file 
which uh, is needed for services which, which provide socket activation. We'll go into detail later on. Mount, auto mount, and, and swap units. Um, they're basically most most of the time internal uh, in for system D. System D uh, parses ETT FS tab and generates uh, units for for the defined devices in there and the mount points and then, and you usually don't have to write um, mount units, so you can do that and you can mix and match them. But most of the time, you just keep on using uh, FS tab and just be happy with it. So that there are path units and timer units. Timer-based activation is something um, which will become more interesting in the future. At the moment, I don't think it's really relevant for Debian. So, so what we are mostly interested in, for, or you, you should be interested in, are target services and sockets. Good. So that's for the quick introduction of, uh, about System D. Now I want to talk about the current state in Wheezy a little bit. So it, it's based on, on version 44. And I already heard about many, uh, from many people who, who said, oh, Debian, as usual, outdated. Uh, what many people don't know is that uh, System D and UDEV, or actually a lot of people do know that, that they were merged. There were <laughs> a lot of framework, uh, flame wars. Um, but to align the, the, the version numbers, um, we skipped 139 releases, I think. So... What we, are, we are currently 14 releases behind. I think it's half a year or something like that. Yeah. And I think it's a pretty solid release. What's mostly missing in, in, in version 44 is that the journal is not as powerful and capable. Um, but, but we were, um, as we were freezing half a year ago, we, we did that before the, the UDEF system D merger. So that's why we chose that, or what, that's why we ended up with that version. Right. So. What we achieved in, in, in Wheezy, and we're going to show that later, is that basically uh, our RCS run level, I don't know how, how many people of you know, so the basic uh, workings of a Debian system 5 init based system where we have the RCS run level, which is basically for setting up the, the initial system where you mount the stuff, where you bring up the network and stuff like that. And we most, yeah, we, we basically got, got rid of that. You can actually, uh, in dpkg force, uninstall the init scripts package and systemd will still boot. Uh, this is, of course, problematic um, because in Debian we have so-called essential flags where dpkg and apt and the other frontends will actually not allow you to remove that package uh, with that flag set. So what we opted for instead is that we blacklist those scripts. That's a mechanism by systemd where you can just symlink uh, the, um, the service to def null, and that means for systemd that, that you ch ch should ignore that service. So even if the underlying init script is system5 init based, we can uh, symlink it to def null in a, in a uh, configuration directory from uh, in systemd, and it will be ignored by systemd. Sure. And um, we do have about 1,200 System 5 init scripts in Debian, which is a lot. Um, but we don't actually have to care about uh, all of them from the start. If you want to have the biggest impact, we start uh, converting the most important ones. And we do have that. For example, UDEF, DBUS, RSYSLOG. So, I mean, there's the, the term plumbing layer, which has been coined a since a few years. Um, we do actually have quite good coverage in, in that area. We have about 60, 60 packages which are already converted. And for a typical desktop installation, I'd say, you do not actually have that many LSB System 5 init scripts left, which are still running. There, there are still, still some, but, but the, the basic, in it, it's, uh, basic system is brought up by System D. Yeah. So what do you, when we package System D, we split it up in, in different packages. There's um, four, ma four main binary packages besides a few library packages. It's the systemd package. Then there's um, um, fairly, fairly simple and, and, and basic UI for it, which you can use. It's systemd uh, GUI. There's systemd slash system5, um, which is nothing more than just a bunch of sim links. Uh, which uh, replace, for example, sbin slash sbin slash init with a symlink to, uh, to uh, bin systemd. Um, since that's a file conflict with the system5 init package, 
uh, and sys5 init. The sys5 init package, again, has the problem that it's an essential package. Um, we decided to move all those, um, all those symlinks into a separate package. So you can actually install systemd without uh, having a conflict uh, by, triggered by the package manager. And last but least, there's libpam systemd, which basically hooks into uh, uh, lockind, which is a service which tracks uh, locked in users. Um, it's basically a successor of, of console kit. And um, what uh, libpam systemd uh, does is it regist uh, registers a session for the user when you do a, a login. And usually you want to do that if you have a, a desktop system where you want to have uh, ACLs applied for your audio devices, video devices, and stuff like that. I mean, there, there can be corner cases where um, you wouldn't want to do that on a server, maybe on a restricted server. But you should, I, I mean, we've seen that a lot of people who uh, disable recommends, who didn't have a LibPAM system D installed, we all say you usually should do that. Okay. Um, when, uh, when you are studying a system uh, five init script, <coughs> or when it's brought up during uh, the system initialization, initialization sorry, uh, is that it, the actual init script is started by uh, systemd. Um, but when you later on, during the runtime of the system, when you are running etsy init rsyslog start, stop, restart, something like that, um, you will kill the process, but systemd will just notice that, that it's been killed and mark this, the service has failed. What you actually want in, the, in that place is that you um, send the start, stop, restart request to systemd, and systemd will do the restarting for you. So what we applied is, is well, a bit of a hack, I'd say. <laughs> we are not that proud of it, but, but it's, it's working exceptionally well, I think. So. There are quite a few, or most of the init scripts, system five init scripts in Debian use the LSB init functions. Um, as I said, there are 1,200 uh, packages, and about 900 of them use those uh, LSB uh, uh, init functions. And uh, we use that, uh, that when it's sourced, we use that to redirect those start, stop, restart calls and uh, divert that to systemd. That also means if you are installing a packet, uh, package um, and the post maintainer scripts run um, invoke RCD and stuff like that. It's also indirectly redirected, um, and for that it's working pretty well. But we want to address this later so, to make that better. Um, as I said, uh, as we split off the the actual symlinks, the conflicting files out of a, in, into a different package, systemd can be installed alongside alongside sys, system five init without any conflicts. Um, you can still have that as a safety net installed. Um, all you need to do is to change your, your boot uh, command, boot parameter, just add init uh, uh, equals bin uh, systemd to your command line, and then it will just fire up and start systemd and it will take over from there. So we do not do actually uh, change the system in any way which would make it impossible to go back to system five init if you desire to do so. So I just wanted to show you the, the, the current state of the system, uh, uh, of the integration. So, is it working? so what we have here is basically um, a stock installation of, of Debian Wheezy. It's, um, it's running the, the, the GNOME desktop. It actually works with 3D and GNOME Shell. Who would have thought? <laughs> it's running inside the virtual box. Uh, do people hear me if I put the microphone here? I'm still working. So. What I'm going to do is just add got install system D. Let's hope the network is speedy. Triggers, stuff like that. Here it's one. As you s you've seen, uh, LibPAM system D is installed automatically. Uh, it's a recommend, so it should be brought in. I still had system five init uh, booted, as you can see from the from the message. Yeah, the I, I can take a look. Okay. Oops, sorry. Maybe. Anyway. Sorry. 
Sorry, that's me. to change it. So at the moment, what you have to do is you have to change your uh, group configuration to still boot uh, to, to boot systemd. I'll do that manually at the moment. <coughs> Probably the easiest way is to just hack that into your uh, HCD for grub configuration. And um, so here we go. So now, now what I did. I forgot to remove the quiet um, boot parameter, so <laughs> the system D just starts at. Um, what system D does here is um, it takes the, the quiet uh, parameter, which, which is usually used for the kernel um, messages, and applies that to its own configuration. You can override that there um, in the system D man page, uh, like system D um, log level. Um, you can trigger. Uh, you so can change to it. Debug yeah. and, and, and change the output of that. So. Yeah, you can change it. You can change those settings both on the kernel command line as well as in the configuration file. So, kernel doesn't load. Demo, demo. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have guessed? <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. Too good that, that we have the fallback mode. Pardon? I did, and it actually worked. It actually worked. So, so. so system CTL is your command with, with, with which you are going to manage um, most of the time your services. So what you are seeing here are device units um, for, for the virtual hardware, for the different, I'm not sure if you can see them here, these are partitions, serial consoles, stuff like that, common card. All right, and um, <coughs> what you're going to see here, those are all native services, they're mount, pa mount units, paths, then here are uh, services, these ones are the, the LSP services. Here we do have an, a native one, a very, I mean, there's, there's, there's lots of still crazy stuff in there which we can uh, trim down. Um, basically, if you scroll down, you'll see, we do still do have uh, a couple of LSP init scripts in there, but RCS log, our ticket, to a big deal, uh, the DBus activated services are a native. Yeah, all right, it works pre pretty well. Mm. So um, that command tool, system CTL, that's basically used um, for for starting, stopping new services. <coughs> um, services by default are dis uh, disabled, and you need to enable them explicitly. Um, and you can do that with the enable command, or disable command from system CTL. Basically everything I wanted to show to you. We can leave that running. So, but but there are still some problems uh, in the current state of of, of Wheezy. Um, Insurf has a very special way of defining um, uh, system facilities. These are virtual facilities, um, which are. You should actually be declared in the system five, the LSB header of the system five init script itself. But but Insurf pulls that out and, and has a etsy insurf conf.d directory where it declares them. So it's not used by a lot of a uh, lot of uh, system five init script, but a few. For example, port map uh, declares uh, um, declares a system um, facility, and due to that, um, NFS mounting is currently not working. I mean, we are probably going to address that in Jesse by, by adding uh, insert parsing support. We do have patches for that. Um, almost likely we are just going to, to convert uh, uh, NFS common and port map to use uh, socket activation. So this problem will just go away because we don't need those explicit dependencies anymore. And Talev briefly mentioned it at the beginning. Um, most of the time, if there are problems uh, with, um, with services in, in systemd, it's 
it's because they're badly written. And um, I mean, be honest, most of us just, just copy existing System 5 init scripts, do some changing of the paths, and that's about it. Nobody actually understands what he's doing in there. So <laughs> at least we have the impression that most people do that. And what we've seen, I mean, we have around 1,200 init scripts, and I did a crap over, over those uh, files. And it, it were about 1,100 sleeps in there. It might, I mean, that's terrible. It's just terrible. And uh, one thing that's, that's causing problems for us is that people actually don't use um, the existing mechanisms to reliably stop a service. Start, stop daemon has something like that, the retry option, which waits until the daemon process has, has stopped, or at least it, the, the PID for that process is not, no longer uh, running. Uh, what, what many people do is they just kill the, signal, uh, kill the process at a sleep, I mean, you do three seconds, five seconds, whatever, depends <laughs> on how fast your machine was, uh, where you developed, uh, or where you've written the System 5 in script. And this is, this is causing problems for, for System D, because System D just uh, issues the stop command and, and doesn't wait for that. Um, restart is another problem. Um, where, where uh, System 5 init scripts uh, do something between stop and, 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 and start. And System D, the, the, the transaction log logic, doesn't actually have a restart command in, in, inside. So it translates that to a uh, uh, stop request and start requests. And uh, so if you do more in, in, in the restart action, that's actually something a System D will not execute. I mean, there are a few, a couple uh, of System 5 init scripts, not that much. We, we first thought that we could uh, add a workaround to system D, but in the end, we decided it's probably just better to get the, the init scripts fixed, and we think it's the right way to do. Good. Yeah, so uh, Jesse, the next release. Um, we're probably going to be using system five in it on most systems um, with the Obvious. Uh, the, so in the next in GNOME three eight, I think they're going to start depending on System D, which it will go cause all kinds of interesting frameworks. I'm sure. So by default, well, I, I think we're likely to see System five in it as still the default. Uh, system D is obviously going to be supported. Uh, if we can move to a single in a system for Jesse, that would make me very happy, but I think I don't think that's going to fly politically, um, because I mean this is this is as as much a political question as a technical question. I think, um, yeah. The 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 source trees for System D and UDEV have merged. Uh, we're going to keep UDEV in its own separate binary package. So, if you want to keep systemd out of your system, you can at least for the time being do that. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah, um, Tolif asked me to take over from here because I'm also part of the GNOME team. And I mean, <clears throat> we are quite a few people in the GNOME team and we talk about what to do with GNOME 3.8 where more and more components are going to rely on systemd. There's the inhibit stuff for power management. There's the lock the the already mentioned lock indie, which replaces console kit. And it, it's getting uh, more and more complicated for us. And we simply do not have the resources uh, to, to keep uh, the console kit alive. So we basically decided that for Jesse, we are going to uh, fully switch to lock indie, uh, which means uh, we, will, um, we will no longer use console kit on, on our Linux based systems. What it exactly means for non-Linux systems about K3BSD, we actually don't know yet. I mean, <clears throat> maybe it's possible to, to, to uh, just disable this kind of functionality in GNOME settings demons and, and still works. We don't know. The thing is, we are more or less uh, <laughs> know that we do not have actually many, or if any, uh, GNOME users on, on K3B, K3BSD, and we spend a lot of time of our of, of our time to just get the, the architecture uh, compiling running, and without any actually users which test and run this stuff. So, I mean, it it will probably happen that some of our packages will become Linux any in the GNOME stack. I guess that's that's what we're going to see. Um, 
what it actually means for, um, for installation of, of new systems is that we probably go going to provide uh, a grub snippet which the, the, the GNOME meta packages can depend on. So your system is autom automatically set up to boot into systemd, so we don't have to hack the command line, the, the boot command line. Um, I don't know if it's possible to, to, to pe depend on systemd slash uh, sys5, because that will conflict with the system5 init package. And we want, uh, uh, want to let people ha keep this option to switch back to system5 init if they took so deserve so. Uh, more of a safety net than we actually encourage that. But mm, I mean, if people are given uh, the opportunity uh, to explore the new system, I mean, it's fairly new, new commands. It works different. It's a, a completely different mental model in, in many ways. And we thought it's probably a good idea to, to give people, at least for a release cycle, the option to switch back to system5 init. So we'll support that in parallel. Yeah, and we're going to make it easier to package up uh, systemd support and, and also make some of the, the tools that we that are in the base system be more aware of system systemd. So for instance, service, invoke RCD, update RCD, write patches to make sure that they will actually do the right thing. And there are actually already patches. We just have to get them merged. Yeah, we need so to actually get them merged. Uh, so, for instance, if you disable a service for in, in one init system, it should also be disabled in the other one. Um, because, you know, it's a bit silly if you disable it Are one place. Are there people who disagree with that? I mean, I hear them moaning. Well, Okay. Yeah, so the, the, the case where we blacklist the services from uh, the init script package, that in that case, we won't actually use update RCD to do that. We will just blacklist this in, in a way which is specific to systemd. So, yeah, no, 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 absolutely not. I mean, like, if you then boot into into system5 init, obviously, the like, the init scripts that it depends on should run, just like when you, when you boot system systemd, we use the, the native services we have for doing the same thing. Um, there is also, last year, there was a Google Summer of Code project, uh, which was a systemd unit to system5 in its script converter. It needs a bit of fixing and brushing up and stuff, but that's also something we want to investigate, because as, as you saw, writing a service description for systemd is really simple. And if we could just generate the init scripts, that would hopefully both make the K3BSD people happy because they can keep their, their init script. And it would hopefully also lead to higher quality init scripts if people were to, when people are, are keep using System5 in it. Uh, it's not going to be a solution for all, all of the different um, scripts, but if we can like for the easy normal demons manage to do that, that's also going to make it much easier to uh, not diverge between init scripts and systemd service descriptions because... Let me just jump in here yeah. for a second. Um, that systemd to system5 init converter is mainly interesting, I think, in the future. I mean, yeah. we already have those uh, system5 init scripts written and they won't go away overnight. So. Um, it's not like supporting system D in Debian means we are cutting off k BSD or other ports. It just means that if you want to support system D, you're going to package uh, those files in the future. And maybe, maybe in the future when you don't want to write system 5 init scripts anymore, you just uh, use that option we provide and, and we can still keep support for, for those uh, ports. And if it's not possible to do that with that, then it could be that you still you have to write two files, which can be a pain for us, for some uh, for some uh, people. But as you've seen, they're pretty simple. The systemd uh, service files, so it really shouldn't be that much effort. Yeah, and as as Michael already mentioned, we can because we have the because system five in its uh, scripts are first class citizens, we can actually 
change packages one by one, we can, we can start shipping. If you, are, if you have a package in the middle of a dependency chain, you can start shipping service files today, well, when Jesse opens, uh, without co having to coordinate that with the packages which you depend on and the packages that depend on you. So that's pretty, pretty neat. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No. Yeah, maybe you, maybe it's a bad term talking about yeah. converting. It's adding support for yeah. systemd. Up, updating is a better word, which yeah. is on the slide. So yeah, not. I mean, unless you, yeah, no, you don't want to drop the system five init scripts yet, unless for some reason you really don't run with system five init, which you probably do today. Yeah. That's yours. Yeah. So. Um, I see we are already pretty late on time, so. I, I, I think we have a question, so. I think that wouldn't be a good idea at the moment for I, at, at, at least for Jesse. Should I repeat the question? Yeah, okay, sorry. Uh, the question was, if I as a package maintainer want to add uh, systemd support to my package, but, but I can't be bothered to write a system five unit script, should I just depend on the systemd package? And I think you shouldn't do that at the moment, at least not for Jesse. <laughs> I mean, as we said, we, 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 give, we have to give people at least one release cycle or two time to get used to, to the new system and uh, Maybe we can uh, we can circumvent the problem by by providing such a system D to system five init converter, so you don't have to do that. I mean, for the simple cases, it should just work, right? I don't think it's a problem of the new size because uh, you need to convert them or you should write a script that you can get them later. Right. It, that's exactly what system D. That's that's a different topic, and and that's what we are going we are going to have to do in in Gnome, yeah. But but for uh, for uh, demon. But when you do that with a package uh, with a high top top class core, uh, I mean, there is an impact. And the question was whether you have to keep the system five in script. Well, you can ask it later, but anyway, it won't work with system five. Right. But I, I'll still add it. I mean, you, you, you can't actually know if, if a daemon is used in the context of GNOME only or if it could, can be used outside of GNOME. So I don't actually think there are that many System 5 uh, in scripts which are affected by uh, or are, are in the GNOME stack. Let's put it that way. So, okay. So as I said, I'll, I'll just go to skip over that pretty quickly So because we're running out of time. I think we only have an hour. So unit files are simple declarative text files. Um, that one is important at this point because um, I think it's been uh, talked about that on Debian developer for a while, <laughs> some time ago, is this override mechanism, uh, which is used more and more in packages. Um, and the idea here is that you ship, uh, the, uh, the package ships its, its configuration source file, its default file under lib or user lib and if you have to dynamically change it by by some kind of um, uh, dynamic mechanism you put that in, in slash run and otherwise <coughs> if a, uh, an administrator has to overwrite a, a, a unit file a service file or any, anything he puts it in at, at C. and there's corresponding directories where you put that let me repeat that packages should put it under lib system D system and so there's actually a configuration, a uh, package config um, file. It's called a system D. It's currently in the system D um, uh, binary package. We didn't bother splitting it off into a system D slash dev package. It's, it's kind of pointless yeah. because install, like build depending on system D, sure, it will, it will install system D on that build D, but it won't actually make any, like it won't make, it won't change the base yeah. system. I mean, so it's, it's actually harmless to install system yeah. D on, on a system. And it doesn't change anything unless you boot and tell it to use it. The question has come up a few times and we just said, I'm one tiny text file, a package config file, we won't do that, uh, add it to a super.
Okay. Because we think it's 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 a nice way how any kind of system can query those variables. Okay. Because that's not not that checking like something like this is not not restricted to to uh, um, development. So this could actually be useful for the installer script as well. Like and it's, it's how how are you going to call the package? I mean, uh, it's separate binary package in Fedora no, too. I, I would say like no, no, Fedora is an independent package. Basically. Okay. So, okay. So for example, let's say you have some closed source software that has an install script not yeah. in a web adopt the unit file, then it could totally invoke package config variables. Okay. We just saw that uh, like we have a system key, um, like we have a couple of other uh, package config mm. files which actually include information about development yeah. information. But this one, this specific one, that is that is okay. completely installed always. So I. Yeah, okay. What, what I completely forgot is to add that Leonard is here, the author of SysMD. He was so kind enough to show up, so <laughs> I can give him a hand of applause at the end. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the different service types, I guess I'll just skip over that pretty quickly. There are, there are mainly five important ones. Um, uh, five ones and important ones are forking and debuss and maybe simple. The other ones, one shot is usually used if you have a, uh, a script which you just execute in system five. In it was a good example, x11 common, which just sets up a few files, but, but doesn't start any long running service. Um, that's the one you want to use for one shot. Simple is the default, it's for non forking uh, demons. Dbus um, uh, type specifies. Um, um, where you signal system D when a, when a process has a daemon has started and is ready to to accept requests. That means uh, dependencies uh, which depend on it are started. So you can grab a, a, a name on the on the system bus, and if that happens, system D will uh, continue starting uh, dependent services, and that's what the type D bus is for. Uh, you specify the bus name, and if that's taken, uh, it, the the service is considered up. Uh, forking. Uh, means that the daemon, it's a classic uh, uh, system five uh, daemon. If you specify a PID file, it will look into that, and usually in, in, in the olden times, uh, uh, when the PID file has been written, it was the signal that the, the, the daemon was up and, and ready to serve requests. Notify is something system D sp uh, specific and needs special support by the, by the, uh, by the actual daemon to signal, I'm ready, oh, please continue. Um, I think they're just a handful. I only know a very demon which uses SD notifier. Are there more? Judith. 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 Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> lots of system D specific people. Right, but but outside of system D, I, I do not know a lot of services which use. Uh, okay. One thing you should know is that LSP uh, system five types of services uh, are using type forking. Remain after exit true. Um, that means, uh, for example, oh, okay. it's already up. Pretty much, okay. So, okay, I go into detail here. Boop. Please skip to the next one. Just let me, oh, one thing which I wanted to stress is that a system T unifies uh, the different type of uh, service activations. I mean, currently in system five init, we have uh, basically uh, the UDEV system uh, uh, DBUS uh, daemon, which, which starts services on demand. We have people running um, uh, stuff in UDEF rules, long-running processes. Um, we do have System 5 init, and it's completely separate, and, and, and System 5 init doesn't know about all these types of services. System D pulls it all together and provides those uh, different types of activations. And yeah. Yeah. Let's go over that if time is going to. Should we just skip to the conclusion? <laughs> okay, skip over it. I guess if, you, if you're interested, um, we're going to put the slides online. online. So I think we'll basically just we skip. Have to skip yeah, we yeah. we kind of do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so may <laughs> maybe no time at all. Those can you go back one slide? If you're going to write system five init scripts, or if you have system five init scripts in your package, you can do that today to better support system five uh, uh, system D, and that's basically already what what we mentioned. Um, Avoid start stop on, on uh, re doing special action on, on restart. Um, we do have a, a um, kind of a hack in system D where we parse the, the, the help output so we know if a daemon supports reload. Many do get that wrong. They, 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 they say 
their daemon supports reload, even if it doesn't. So try to, to avoid doing that. Um, if it's possible, don't use enable disable flags in your, and, and, and if, if possible, don't use any uh, Debian specific config files at all. Um, if, for example, uh, if in any case you have to test if, because you have systemd specific code in your in a system 5 init script or something else, just use that test in shell. It's going to, it's basically it. Yeah, skip to. Okay. Yeah, so conclusion. Um, currently, don't add, t like, well, we're in the middle of a freeze. It's kind of hard to add much. Uh, but wait until Jesse is open, and we actually have some more of, of the policy and all that bit in place. Because if you start doing too much before then, uh, you're going to have to do extra work. Uh, yeah. It's better to actually not add that extra support than have it broken, unsurprisingly. Talk to us. Uh, we're on we're on IRC. Uh, we also have email addresses, so we also are here. So just grab us if you have any questions. We would really like feedback. We like, I mean, it works for me, uh, but and it works for Michael. But we don't actually have that much feedback from people on whether this works well for people. Whether what kind of problems you're running into, both in in the system D package itself but also as packagers, what kind of, like, do you like, w what extra tools do you need? And yeah, don't be afraid, we're not that scary. <laughs> okay, so we don't have any time for any questions, or is time really? Okay, sorry. Uh, so if you're interested uh, <laughs> and, and you still have questions, grab outside. At this uh, moment in time, I do not uh, strongly support Aether system D or Upstart, but I believe that we should really uh, use one or the other uh, because we cannot afford uh, to uh, continue using an uh, out-of-date uh, init system. My belief uh, is that a simple way to ensure that Debian will su support Aether, Upstart uh, or system D is to make uh, UDEV depend on one or the other. Thank you.